I think that's probably the thing we've learned over the 35 plus years and thousands of, of foals is they're not all the same. Even full brothers and sisters are not necessarily the same. I'll show a little bit about what I would do if I bought one of these babies. Um, and and how to, a round pen. And how to do it in a round pen. And I worked this horse already like two days ago for the first time. But he's still really green. But he's really nice. So Jerry might talk about what I'm doing. How's I'll talk doing? a little bit as he's working, kind of what uh, he's doing, what our purpose is, what our, uh, I guess, hope the results are and maybe talk about what's not happening if it's not happening <laughs> and okay this colt right here he's been caught probably twice three times and I, and I couldn't say even caught he's been captured and so um, we're just going to come in here and work him around get him to get used to stuff like the tarp there he's never been over the tarp well I guess we we just ruined that. Now he's been over the tarp. <laughs> uh, he's just really a good-minded little colt. So tell us about his breeding. Um, his mother is a driftwood bred horse, and a little bit of running on there also. And the top side, his sire is Rojo's Classy Roan RKR. And he's um, a lot of Hancock on the top, and then there's some Zanpar bar in there. So he's a little different type of breeding for the Hancock, which we really like. Really smart. All the foals that we've messed with have had good minds to him. This guy's no exception. Like I say, he hasn't had anything really done to him. We worked him in the round pin the other day just probably 15 minutes and he acted just like this so you know everything you're seeing is kind of what he did right off oh. he's just he's a real thinker Lincoln just bumped into me huh? he was more worried about Lincoln on the outside when we worked him a couple of days ago and so you know you can see he's he picks up he he really relaxed himself there he turned faced in he started to lick his lips his tail relaxed and Henson's just getting to where he'll pay attention to him. You know, it's not so much as trying to get him to go in a circle for any reason. He's just trying to get him to move out and then look him up and say, you know, I like being with you a little better than maybe r running around this pen. So he, I guess you could call, he's chasing him a little bit. But see, with that, he made the little move there of, I'm looking for you. And Henson just kind of quit right there and said okay but he doesn't want him to go in the other direction so he's going to make sure he's hooked up and paying attention to him just like that now his ears are moving he's waiting for lincoln there lincoln went and he'll change him again so he's saying no that's not what i want i want you to just kind of you can just stand here but i want you to come to the inside if you're going to go the other direction just like that move that front end come around He doesn't have to go around real hard. He just go around enough that he can make some changes. And the change is, I'm looking up somebody who wants to be my friend. He's thinking about it. His ear moved a little bit there. He's kind of paying attention. He's waiting for Lincoln too. So there's a lot going on, which you know is good. He has a tarp in the middle of the pen. He has a guy out there with a flag and he's got this dog running around the outside, but he can still pay attention. <laughs> so for some people, the fact that Lincoln's running around this round pin, it may be a little irritating to them. To us, it's just another distraction that we hope our, our horses have a mind to think about what's really happening and that's who's in the pen with them what what are they trying to accomplish the dog doesn't really mean anything to him after a, after a, a bit 
He's just getting his exercise. Lincoln probably has to be in the best shape of any dog I know. I think he probably runs more miles than any dog I've ever known. And does it with a smile. He loves it. <laughs> See, there's a real good change right there. See, he notices Lincoln's behind him, but he knows Henson's right here in front. He knows who he's supposed to be paying attention to. He's really relaxed. He kind of licked his lips there. If he wants to leave, that's okay. He, he's going to find out. It's just more comfortable just to kind of stand there. So he's really thinking about it. He has two things he's thinking about. Lincoln's on the outside and Henson's on the inside here. And he started to make a change and then he, he decided maybe not. Now, there he went over the tarp really good again. And he's never been over the tarp till today. He's been running in the pasture, so it's not like he's been in the stall being babied or pampered you can see all the mud on him see he's really thinking he he wants to do the right thing he just hasn't been around people um, he doesn't really even know how to be caught so it's all new and that's the goal to catch him today? Just, just to catch him and let him know that you know we're okay and and not just us but anybody who, who wants to approach him as long as they approach him properly he's going to accept it and know that they're a friend see he's still just a little reluctant so and so put just a little more pressure just saying it's it's easier just to come stand here and let me kind of approach you if not then you can just trot around this pen a little bit more I sometimes, when, I, when I'm doing this, I think, am I working the horse or is the horse working me? <laughs> and, and that's really true. I think you have to, first of all, try to be in as good a shape as you can be, patient, and see the signs that, that the horse is giving you. See there, he said, no, it's not what I want, no. He'll, he'll, he'll try to shut him off, there he goes. And say, so you can come to the inside. Now, if you're a person that drives your horse once you kind of get a, a bit in their mouth or whatever, this sometimes doesn't work real well for you because you will probably turn your horse into the fence sometimes. So this is good for, for what we do and hopefully for others. If not, they can always change it. They, they're smart enough to figure out new things. I guess that's the beauty about training not everybody does it the same and we're always up for ideas of, of what's better and it might work better for someone maybe not for us just as ours maybe not work that great for someone else so see he just keeps trying to uh, approach him let him know it's not going to hurt him. But if he doesn't want to stand there, then by all means, go around. Have fun out there. And it's not so much that we're trying to get him tired. I mean, sometimes that does happen. They just get, they do get tired and they kind of give in. But if you do it properly, you're still getting something done there that works for both of you. Now he's going to be a little easier on his approach. And once he gets to him, he'll just kind of try to rub him there on the forehead. That's a real vulnerable place. So if you can get there, you can usually get almost anywhere. And if he's comfortable with that, then that's a pretty good sign. And see, and he was pretty, pretty comfortable with that. Now what he's going to try to do is see if he'll kind of lead out to him. He doesn't know anything about that, so it can be kind of a challenge to get him to kind of stay hooked on with you. Is he going to be a red roan? He will be a red roan. He's a, I guess, a, what they call a red roan or a chestnut roan. Be a little darker. 
So he's getting him to know that, you know, we use the flag to kind of move you around, but the flag can still be your friend. And he's figured that out right there. But I guess that flag's not too bad. He's more worried about Lincoln on the outside because you can't really see him. So we've uh, found out that the flag will move him, but the flag will also rub him, and he's okay with that. Now, this is just a you know, motion of let's move. He didn't hit him with it, didn't slap him with it, just shook it and said, let's just kind of move. But he can still smell it and say, well, it's not that scary. <laughs> So it can work just as your hand or your arm, it's just an extension. It's a little safer on uh, young horses that haven't had a lot of handling. It's a little harder to kick you. Now he just wants him to move that front end and just move out of the way. And he's thinking, I really like just being here with you. And so see, he, he really figured that out. You see, he approached him a lot faster that time. He moved up on me a little quicker. Uh, he stood there really nice. Just because everything he set up leading up to that gave the horse the confidence. Now, his name is J. Hart Redberry, I believe. We don't really uh, call him anything. I guess we could call him Redberry. Or Berry Red. <laughs> Look at him, just lick his lips. He's he's really liking this. He's thinking, you know, Henson is my friend. Yeah, Flag is my friend. Link is my friend. I just don't know where he's at. <laughs> Again, he's just saying, I'm going to ask you to leave. And then I'm going to give you a chance to, to come back to me. And there's that chance. He looked in and said, okay, I get you. So he really likes that, rubbing him on the head. And again, he's just saying, uh, I'm gonna ask you to leave and I want you to just respect my wishes here, but then I'm gonna ask you to come back. See, he's made a lot more effort coming to the middle of the, the circle. That's giving Henson a lot of information, letting Henson know that He's picking it up, he's liking me, he, he made more of an effort to come towards me. And Henson will just take him, rub him all over. Gonna wanna pick his feet up someday and this just kinda helps. How old is this foal? You know, I don't know exact birth date, I'm gonna say he's probably a late May, early June foal. And you know, he hasn't been babied, he, he doesn't even know what grain is. We've never, never fed him any grain, never fed his mother any grain. He's just been out on the pasture with his mother and we brought him in. He had a little hay for about a week or so while he's in the pen and then we just turned him right back out to the pasture and that's where he's been. He's been just out on, on range. It's not irrigated pasture or anything. And this fall's getting picked up next week right i think tuesday or wednesday i believe the um, devon's his name devon will be coming to pick him up devon is from nebraska well he realized the rope was there so he know he can see he, he knows what's around he kind of stepped over it so he's paying attention to to henson but he's also paying attention to all the things around him see now he's curious about the rope and now he'll get him to where he'll just move that hind end a little bit and, and maybe he'll walk out a little bit there he is see he said okay I I want to stay next to you so that was really the whole purpose coming into the round pin is establish the trust with everything around the flag the tarp Henson himself and saying, I, I can be your friend if you want. Let's uh, let's hook up and be bros. So they got a little bit of a bromance going on right there. 
<laughs> a little bit about Hanson. He's been doing this a long time. I started him when he was just really, really young. And uh, he's always been just really smart about it. He's really picked up things. He, he reads a horse really well. He has a great respect for him. Uh, but he also knows the capability of a horse and that really helps in training. Sometimes I think when he was younger and we were training, he'd want to finish one maybe a little too fast. And I think over the years he's gotten a little more patient and I'm still probably not very patient. That's why he's, in my opinion, probably the better trainer. I want my results now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the better salesman. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Everybody has their own strengths. <laughs> we have our own strengths, but. Henson rode bulls for a long time, and what I'd try to tell him so I could get him to do some training was, well, son, if you want to be a real good bull rider, you have to ride lots of young horses and, and get a real good seat on these horses. And he rode a lot of young horses. Um, and I'm pretty sure it probably helped him on his seat on bulls too, but I'm glad he's not riding bulls. Me too. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> yeah. He's a man of many talents, that's for sure. Is that your brush today? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a soft brush, but he, he has a coiled brush. <laughs> Your hairbrush is supposed to be in your back pocket. <laughs> I don't think the hairbrush is tough enough for this. This is he's, really thick. Yeah, he's pretty muddy. <laughs> Mud. It probably just break them bristles. <laughs> yeah. I thought about washing him off, but the weather is just a little too cold, and I don't want to get him sick, especially if he's going to be traveling. He doesn't need to be sick. I'd rather him be a little bit muddy then sick that mud will come off sickness sometimes is is pretty hard on him see he's really thinking about hints and he he wants to move them feet and do something curious about the flag laying there he's never seen it laying there so he's curious see he just really wants to pay attention really wants to do something good you know horses are a lot like us we always like to find the easiest way to do something. A horse can do that too, and sometimes that's good and bad. Sometimes your horse will shortcut you or cut you off. But he's really feeling the, the goodness that he's getting right there. There's trust, some respect. There's probably a, a little bit of fear still there, but not much. She's kind of getting over it. Not a tomorrow will probably be a new day. It'll take, you know, a couple of minutes maybe, and he'll go right back to what he he's where he is right now today, and maybe come right into it. They're all just a little bit different. I think that's probably the thing we've learned over the thirty-five plus years, and thousands of, of foals is they're not all the same even full brothers and sisters are not necessarily the same so you you work every one of them for them not for what you did the day before with a different horse or 10 minutes earlier with a different horse you know I really like all that right there I mean just look at the trust his, his ears are back he's kind of paying attention but he's really relaxed you know we contribute a lot of this to a trainer and a trainer has a big part of it but there's a lot to the breeding and genetics that play in that also now see he's never done this this is new so he was a little hesitant for a second but 
he found out that's not too bad he's never had anything tied up around his neck and sometimes that'll scare him so he's learned a little bit about pressure already and and to come off of it so he wants to keep a little bit of slack in there so he, he just moves whatever direction plus he he's kind of following Henson too he knows so he's really paying attention to him he can go the other direction now he's moving his feet a little bit more he hasn't felt the pressure yet there it is a little bit on him there he came off of it a little bit more he saw something that caught his eye now he's just going to see if he can lead him over the tarp. He stepped over it twice himself. And so it's sometimes a little bit different when you're when you're asking them. And it's not exactly their free will. So he's going to keep just a little bit of pressure on there, moving to the side. Just keep them, the feet moving. If the feet aren't moving, nothing's going on. Got to transfer all of that from his mind to his feet. There he kind of stepped on it. He's thinking about it. He's going to skirt it a little bit. Which is fine. Because what he'll establish is when I pull on you, that pressure really is telling you we need to come that direction. There it is. See? He figured it out. Henson was smart in how he took him up to the corner there and then just asked him to sidestep over. See, he started thinking about that before that ever got pressure on it. There's a lot of room in between him and Henson right there. Maybe a good 10 foot, 8, 10 foot. He's not used to being led that, that far away. There we go. See, he trusted him. Look at that just kind of rolled back and came over the with his front end felt that pressure teach him this pressure and and relief really helps when you get on and start training one when you want to move the hind quarters or you just want to move the front end or you want to just try to move one or one leg at a time it helps with all of that so this is just preparation it what do you think it's good so yeah people could do that and then in a couple of years that sucker's almost broke <laughs> you've taught him a lot of basics and a lot of foundation in just a short time that for some it doesn't seem like you did enough or didn't do anything but everything that was done was in truck he he did it properly see like now he's coming in and he's already moved that hindquarters over he's looked at him and said what are we going to do so he's already prepared himself for the henson to go in there and catch him he's already prepared himself and it'll be the same way as the as time goes on he'll prepare himself when henson's sitting on a, on his back and he feels his body move he feels a foot come in or move out, his, his weight shift, that horse is already preparing to do a movement because he's already set him up for it. And he's never backed up, so see this is the first there, he, he learned to come back off of that halter a little bit. Like, I don't know, that gate's kind of scary right there next to me. <laughs> just rub him and he's okay with it. He's just, he's searching. Because we always go forward. 
So he'll just keep putting a little more pressure to him and make it a little more difficult to where he'll, he'll search a little more. There it is. And he got, got rewarded for that. He's still going to have to search. There it is. And all that's going to transfer when you're on him and you're trying to open the gate. He'll remember to move off pressures, whether it's your legs or whether you collected him up and asked him to move back or to the side. So these are all just things that you do to give them a feel. I think Henson will, will say the same thing in some of the horses that we get. Not that they're bad horses, they're good horses, but sometimes they don't have enough feel. And what we mean is they don't respond to a light pressure. You, you almost have to drag them or push them. And when they come as you know twos and three-year-olds, they're big and they're heavy and they're pretty hard to move. It's easier to do it then when you can control them just a little bit better. And it stays with them their whole life. It'll stay with, he'll, he'll remember that forever if they, you just keep doing it. Same with loading. You know, try to get him to go on and just a, a loose. He's thinking about it. There he is. And Lincoln came and helped. <laughs> Thank you, Lincoln. So I'm just trying to get my spot, you know, just hurrying my bro around. Uh, maybe if you've ever watched Lincoln around the horses, he he does a lot of training too that most people don't realize. He will come rushing up to the back of those horses and he'll get right to their tails or he'll rub them on their back legs and and you know that's really preparing that horse for a lot of things also, whether it's another dog or something brushing up against. Lincoln doesn't even know he's doing it, but he does a lot of training. He doesn't even know about. <laughs> Prepares those for just all kinds of little crazy things that might happen. Okay. Thanks for the training session, guys. <laughs> I'd say any time, but. <laughs> <laughs>